Hi friends, good evening and welcome to my channel Mukambika Nursing. Friends here, we can discuss questions for ESIC staff nurse exam. Also RRB, DSSB, AIMS NOSET, then Kerala PSC DME exam, insurance medical service exam, also JPHN exam. So today we can discuss questions from previous year question papers and also important question. Let's start the question. First question. Which source of occupational exposure may cause anthracosis? Options. Option A. Silica dust. Option B. Asbestos. Option C. Coal dust. Option D. Cotton dust. Occupational exposure to silica dust may cause silicosis. And exposure to asbestos may cause asbestosis. And exposure to cotton dust may cause bicinosis. Here, occupational exposure to coal dust may cause anthracosis. Option C is the correct answer. And the next question. Pain felt in the cough muscles when doxyflexed with leg extended at knee is called. Options. Option A. Kerning sign. Option B. Spadling sign. Option C. Hopman sign. Option D. Gould sign. And the correct answer is Hopman sign. Hopman sign means it is one of the positive sign of deep vein thrombosis DVT. Here the patient may feel discomfort behind the knee and the patient felt pain on the calf muscles when doxyflushed with leg extended. And first option, kerning sign, it is one of the positive sign of meningitis. And the second option, spalling sign, it is one of the positive sign of intrauterine fetal demise or intrauterine fetal death. And option D, ghoul sign, it is one of the sign of pregnancy, that is softening of the cervix is ghoul sign. Here our answer is option C, Hohmann sign. And the next question, thromboangitis obliterans is also known as options, option A, Burgers disease, option B, atherosclerosis, option C, arterial flutter disease and option D, aortic obliterans. And the correct answer is option A, Burgers disease. Thromboangitis obliterans is also known as Burgers disease. Thromboangitis obliterans or Burgers disease is a chronic inflammatory vascular occlusive disorder mainly of peripheral small and medium sized arteries of the extremities. Due to this occlusion, the blood supply will be decreased in the legs and feet okay due to this decreased blood supply to the extremities and feet may cause gangrene of the toes and intermittent claudications so here thromboangitis obliterans is also known as burgers disease and the next question the artery commonly affected during myocardial infraction is options option a carotid artery option b hepatic artery option c coronary artery and option d renal artery and the correct answer is it is coronary artery. The artery which is most commonly affected myocardial infraction or MI is coronary artery. And the next question, which cardiac enzyme would be the nurse expect to elevate first in a client diagnosed with myocardial infraction? Options, option A creatinine phosphokinase, CPKMB. Option B, troponin. Option C, lactate dehydrogenase. Option D, WBCs. Question is, in myocardial infraction, which cardiac enzyme should be elevated first? Okay, cardiac enzyme. So, the answer is creatinine phosphokinase. Option A is the correct answer. Creatinine phosphokinase is mainly present in the cardiac muscles. CPKMB is mainly performed to detect myocardial infraction. This creatinine kinase level begins to rise within 6 hours of muscle damage and the peak range value is 18 hours. Okay, so the enzyme elevated first in a client with myocardial infraction is creatinine phosphokinase. And the second option troponin. Troponin is a regulatory protein. Okay, and uh, 
third option lactate dehydrogenase this is also an isoenzyme but this begin to rise 24 hours after myocardial infraction and its peak value reaches about 48 to 72 hours but in case of creatinine phosphokinase its level start to rise within 6 hours of muscle damage and peak ranges within 18 hours. Okay. Move on to the next question. Nifidapin is used for the treatment of eclampsia is an options. Option A beta blockers. Option B prostaglandin inhibitors. Option C calcium channel blockers. Option D adrenergic antagonist. Nifidapin is an example of calcium channel blockers option c is the correct answer it is used to treat eclampsia it is a calcium channel blockers move on to the next question a nurse is caring for a client in labor the nurse determined that the client is beginning the second stage of labor which of the following assessment is noted options option a the contractions are regular option b the membranes have ruptured option c cervix is dilated completely option d the client begins to expel clear vaginal fluid here the question is a nurse is caring for a client in labor and the client is in beginning stage of second beginning the second stage of labor so among this option in the second stage of labor, which assessment we can see in second stage of labor? That is the question. The first option, the contractions are regular. Contractions usually come in the first stage. First stage of labor means one set of true labor pain and the contractions and dilatation of the cervix. That is the first stage of labor. And in the second stage of labor means it begins with full dilatation of the cervix and ends with expulsion of the fetus so the second stage beginning of the second stage of labor the nurse can assess full dilatation of the cervix that is the cervix is completely dilated option c is the correct answer and the next question a patient suffering with high blood pressure should be given Option A, high protein diet. Option B, less fiber diet. Option C, less sodium diet. And option D, all of this. And the correct answer is option C, less sodium diet. Sodium is the most abundant mineral which is present in the extracellular fluid. If you are advising the patient to avoid sodium rich diet, thereby we can reduce or decrease extracellular sodium content in the body thereby we can reduce body edema and also we should advise hypertensive patient to take low sodium diet and the next question what is the most common cause of child mortality rate in worldwide options option a diarrhea option b pneumonia option c obstetrical hemorrhage option d malaria and the correct answer is Option B, pneumonia. The most common cause of child mortality in worldwide is pneumonia. And the next question. The first priority nursing intervention in a patient with needle stick injury should. Options. Option A, inform the physician immediately. Option B, press the injury site. Option C, wash the injury site with copious amount of water. Option D, post prophylaxis treatment. Question is what is the first nursing action in a patient with needle stick injury? Okay, so the correct answer will go wash the injury site with copious amount of water. Immediately if the patient get needle stick injury means the nurse should stop all other procedures and wait for little to bleed in the injury area and then wash the injury site with water. Option C is the correct answer. Today we discussed some of the important and previous year questions for exam preparation. Surely these questions will helpful for your studies. If it is useful for your studies, please subscribe my channel and share my videos to your friend circle. Thank you for watching my videos. In the next video, we can see next set of questions.